I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Thomas is unbelief and the gospel. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, passing the faith to the next generation, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notification, and donate. We need your tax deductible gift in these dire times to continue passing the faith to the next generation. We need your help. The Sunday's gospel is John chapter 20, in which John, the, the Lord appears to his disciples as they are locked in the upper room. Um, a very, very well-known gospel, although, um, well, let's take a look at it. It starts with verse 19. On the evening of the first day, on that day, the first day of the week, the first day of the week is Sunday, so this is a week after Easter, that is, well, yesterday. The doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Now, why would they quarantine themselves? What were they afraid of? They were afraid that what happened to Jesus would happen to them. Were they cowards? I don't think so. Dead people stay dead. The women had told them that he had raised, uh, uh, Mary Magdalene had told her, told them that, G, that he had risen from the dead. But believing that is a little hard. Um, it's hard to believe when you're used to, to, to death being the end that something other than death had occurred. And so they locked themselves up in their rooms because what else were they to do? What else were they to think other than it's over? It's done. They're locked in that room and Jesus appears to them and he doesn't say to them, you guys stink. You are the worst disciples. It's hard to find good disciples these days, but you're the worst. No, instead, he looks at them and he says, peace be with you, which is the same thing he says to you at the sacrament. Peace be with you. What he says all the time to you because he wants to peace you. He wants to save you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And they were glad they'd seen the Lord, which is what he showed Mary Magdalene, which is what he sent Mary Magdalene to tell them that he was alive. He shows them his hands and side. What does Thomas want to see later? His hands and his side. The proof that he was truly alive. That the one who died was now alive. Peace be with you a second time. As the Father ap apostled me, so I'm sending you. Apostle is a sent one. I'm a sent one. He apostled me, so I'm sending you. And with this, he breathed on them, just like he breathed life into Adam. He breathed on them. A life-giving word which sounded like this. If you receive the Holy Spirit, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you hold forgiveness from any, it's withheld. We'll handle this tomorrow. It's enough to say what he, the life-giving word that he speaks to you, that he enlivens you with, is none other than, I forgive you all your sins. That word, his forgiveness, is the very voice of the gospel. If the gospel had a sound, if it had a voice, it would be the sound of, I forgive you all your sins. Well, does that mean I'm giving the gospel to somebody when I forgive them? Now you've got it. When you forgive someone, you are telling them that Jesus loves them too. Because God has forgiven you, you're going to forgive them. A clearer confession of that gospel is that Jesus forgives you. He forgives your sins. He forgives your doubt. He forgives your despair. He forgives your deep, dark shame and vice. And, and vice. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, also named, also called the twin. He's one of the 12. He's one of the apostles. He's got a nickname named twin. Who do you think his twin is? Do you know anybody full of doubt and despair who would like to see the Lord to believe? I'm talking about you and me. We're Thomas's twin. 
The other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless, 25, unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails and place my finger into the marks of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. I will never believe. This is not doubt. This is unbelief. This is rejection. He is not doubting Thomas. He's unbelieving Thomas. He's rejecting Thomas. He rejected the apostle's word. Now, granted, had it been Andrew or Peter who had gone to the Wally world to pick up the TP instead of locking themselves in quarantine, then we would be talking about doubting Peter or doubting um, or doubting Andrew. But instead it was Thomas, who is forever nicknamed not only twin, but doubting. It's catchy, but it's not true. He's unbelieving Thomas. Eight days later, so this happened on Easter night, eight days later, that's us, that's this night. His disciples were inside it, and Thomas was with them. So again, they're locked up. Even though the gospel was a universe changing reality, they still live in a world where the Jews are going to kill them. They still lived in a world of despair and doubt. And that despair and doubt was lived uh, in their locking themselves in. Jesus shows up again behind locked doors. And again, he doesn't say, Ooh, you guys make me so mad you're unbelieving. Peace be with you. Pax Domine. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand here, place it in my side. Thrust your hand here. He says back to Thomas, Thomas's stipulation. I'm going to need to do A, B, and C in order for me to believe. And so Jesus says, A, B, and C. Do you believe now? Don't be disbelieving. That's a bad translation. Um, I want you to see this. That's apistos, and this is pistos. In Greek, you put an alpha in front of a word, an A in front of a word, in order to um, negate that word, sort of like we do in English with the word un. So if I were to tell you that this word Jesus uses is faith, believing, be not unfaith, but faith. Be not unbelieving, but believe. There it is right there. Trustworthy, faithful, dependable, inspiring trust or faith. Pistos is the word for faith. Be not unbelieving, but believe. Don't be unbelieving. Don't be doubting. Believe that I died and rose again for you. Believe that I live for you. Believe that you live in me. Again, he should have trusted the apostles' words. But this happened for you. Thomas looks at him and goes, my Lord and my God, my Savior and my God. Have you believed because you've seen me? Or what Jesus actually says is, because you've seen me, you believe. Blessed are, blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. Blessed are you and me who don't see and believe. Blessed are those not seeing and believe. Blessed are you and me who have only the apostles' words that Jesus died and rose again and that our sins are forgiven by the suffering and death of Jesus. Don't miss this. Don't miss this comfort. The God who could condemn doesn't. Instead, he gives peace. Peace in the nail-scarred hands. Peace for unbelieving Thomas. Peace for doubting you and me. And it's all peace wrapped in the forgiveness of sins. I forgive you all your sins. Those words enliven the very faith to trust that Jesus truly is alive. Later on this week, we'll talk about why the scriptures. Later on this week, we'll talk about 
whether man can be forgiven sins. Today, it's enough to see the, the gospel is in peace be with you and I forgive you. That's the gospel. You are at peace with God. Oh, by the way, I forgive you all your sins. And the only thing to say to that word is, Amen, my Lord and my God. No more unbelieving Thomas, believing Thomas. And believing and forgiven and at peace, you and me. I'm Pastor George Borkart and the snoozing Thor. And this has been another Higher Things video short.